Hey guys, Rathnado to Uno reviewing a Droid X from Motorola. The phone is amazing. Let's just go start with that. The camera, not so amazing, but it works. Uh, I'm here to tell you about basically the secret behind Motorola's same media dock and car dock applications. Normally, you have to buy a $30 dock from Motorola or from some other manufacturer to activate the media dock or anything like that. Now there's no application for the Droid X because it just came out a couple days ago to enable your media dock. There is a car dock app but there is no media dock app. So what I've done is discovered already that the Droid X has the same thing as the Droid Original and Motorola has kept its same magnetic activation setup. So you place the magnet on the back with a certain polarity it'll switch to a certain dock. Right now it's the car dock. So that probably is a negative polarity. If I switch to, or the south polarity. If I switch the other way, it should automatically go into the media dock. And, and it does. So that's the magnetic. And to put the magnet right in between the crease of the speaker and the battery on the right hand side. If, I mean sorry, on the left hand side if you're looking that way. Yeah. Right about there actually. It's probably the best sweet spot. So and this won't hurt your phone at all, but a Motorola Droid design is designed to do this. Now when you remove it, all the applications should come back. There we go. Uh, one thing about purchasing the Motorola Droid X, if you're thinking about it, is if you're used to using Android devices that are very quick, this is definitely one to get. But one that's quick, that has its limitations. This is very fast screen switching through this menu that Motorola has included. But it's also very annoying because when I want to access a phone call, very quickly, I have to wait a few seconds for that to actually disappear. Now, in order to access my contacts, phone, and, and the phone number. This me this dock, I, I think, should most likely be much more usable at the top of the screen or even in the center when switching. When switching. At the bottom, it's just a complete hassle. Uh, for the most part, though, everything works just as it should. I'm not shooting this video in HD because I am up at like 1 in the morning anyway, by the way. So, way too late for me. Um, what else can I say about this? The camera is not stunning. The button that you have, the button to click in the camera is also kind of annoying. You have to press and hold the camera button in, in order to actually get anything done. Oh, now I have to make copyright to Nintendo because you guys saw the Wii and the Xbox. Crap. Anyway, um, the camera button is the camera button is kind of annoying. But it's also a good thing because whenever you're using the, the droid in portrait mode, you don't bump the camera button very easily and it doesn't activate your camera. Uh, the lock screen is very nice for this. The lock screen is located on the top, powered, etc. Uh, we'll do that for you, give the lock screen the time, everything else. It's typical Android stuff. It automatically has a passcode that you have to set up when you first start up. Um, that's basically all the things I wanted to tell you today. The other thing I wanted to tell you is about this amazing application that I have found. It's called Application Organizer, which you guys have, that are familiar with Android have probably already got, but the persons that have just bought their first Android phone is the Droid X. You may want to look into it. It's called Android Organizer. It is a beautiful app. Oh, sorry, App Organizer. Um, basically, it takes all your applications, and instead of having a gigantic list of them on your... Uh, home screens or in the application center, it puts them all straight in little folders for you to access. So, the tools, I can get all my tools that I set there, and these are all customizable icons and, and everything else. The Moto Blur is nice, except for this dock bar at the bottom, like I said. They have at least toned it down. The, uh, the Motorola widgets are okay, but the weather widget has been buggy for me. It may be better in different areas, that's all depending on your 3G coverage and other things. The battery life on this has been really weird. I've had a bunch of different things. Like right now I have 11 hours and 52 minutes, but there's no possible way I have that because I had 6 hours at 90%, which doesn't make any sense. I think the application might just be screwed up. The text to voice is beautiful. The keyboard is one of the best keyboards for the droid because it's on a 4.3 inch screen, which that would enable it to use the multi-touch keyboard that they've already included instead of having to use their own. I've tried the, uh, I think it's called the Swift Keyboard, a Swift Key Beta or something, and I personally like the Droid X keyboard, this uh, stock one, built much better than the original one. So that's all I have for you guys today. So remember that Media Dock is $30 and so is that Car Dock, so if you want to build your own out of plastic and using your oven, go ahead and try that. I'm definitely going to do that. 
Uh, also, by the way, uh, screen protectors. They sell these at Verizon for like 15 bucks or even on eBay. These are great because the original screen for the droid is very sticky, if I used to say. Like, if I wanted to slide my finger across it, it takes a minimal amount of force. And the capacitor touch screens, you have to put a little bit of force and effort on it. When I put the new screen on, it's very easy, very glidey to slick. It's almost like ice slipping back and forth between the home screens. It comes with a couple wire papers. Um, mostly, some of the live ones are really nice. The Galaxy and all the stuff that you can get probably on the Android market already. Um, the wallpapers that it also comes with, the ones that are included are pretty neat. I'll show you these guys real quick to give you a nice little preview of all the wallpapers that it comes with. See, let's see, zoom in there. Oop, I don't want to set that. Oh, well, I was going to set it. This wallpaper. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you with that. Anyway, use the droid as a uh, car dock now with your magnet. So if you have the droid, or if you have any, I'm sorry, if you have the droid X, and you have a old GPS mount or something similar to that, get some Velcro, Velcro it on. I'd Velcro it right here and right at the top of the camera where it's not being used. Don't Velcro the battery cover. You'll cover signal there. Oh, also, that's what I wanted to say, signal. Signal, signal, signal. Everyone's scraping about the iPhone signal. Well, guess what? I only get two bars. And the reason I only get two bars is because I'm holding my phone this way. If I compact my phone very tightly around this, around its edges, I will have no bars. If you leave it set for a certain, certain amount of time, I will eventually get three to four bars. The reason being this takes a long time is because the algorithms are set to make sure users aren't confused at how many bars they're actually getting. The algorithms need to be updated in Android 2.2, and they will be updated. And I've also heard, and they will be updated. I've heard many great things from Froyo that will allow the phone to do so much more. There's an update coming this summer for Flash 10.01, I believe. 10.01, I think that's how it is. And that will allow your Flash applications, YouTube, all kinds of Hulu applications enabled or anything like that. Unlike the iPad, which you have to pay for the U for the Hulu application. <laughs> And I would say that's about it for today. Thank you very much. Bye.